Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. I try to do an overhaul video every Friday, but last week we had a storm that came through and took out the electricity for a few days. Also, I mentioned in the last video that I was going to make a new tool. I did not manage to get that done either, but I'm going to try again to make that next week. In the last video, I got the slide tube straightened out. There were some severe dents in there, and it was also bent along the dents. I got it straightened out for the most part, but when I straightened it out, there were some ripples that appeared on the slide. So today, I'm going to try to get those out. Here's where the dent was on the slide, and it's probably hard to see in the video, but there are some ripples in the brass, especially on the opposite side. What happened is when it got bent and dented, it stretched the metal out on the other side. So when I straightened it out, there is some rippling in this metal on the opposite side. So I'm going to have to try to get those ripples straightened out. I'm also going to have to remove this dent a little bit better. It may not appear like much, but when you are using a trombone slide, you want that to work very well. And this is a larger dent, so it does keep the slide from working well. The slide does slide back and forth, but it does not work well. Trombone slides have what's called a stocking, and that's a little section at the end that has a little bit larger diameter than the rest of the slide does. So when the outer slide makes contact with the inner slide, it usually only makes contact right where the stocking is, unless the slide is bent. If it's bent, then it can make contact elsewhere, but it's only supposed to make contact where the stocking is. So if I put the slide on there, uh, what happens is, if I let go, it slides out a little bit. And then when the dent hits where the stocking is, then it stops. If I go past where the stocking is, right there, the slide works reasonably well again. That tells me that the big problem on the slide is only where the dent is. Now I'm going to try to figure out what I need to do on the slide to make it work well. So I'm going to put the slide right there, and that's right where it starts to stick. And I'm going to... Move that around. Okay, I bent up and then the slide started sliding in. Then I let go and it finishes the rest of the way. Let's see, I'm going to try that again. Okay, I bent the slide. Now I'm going to let go and it slides in. So, But the only thing is when you're playing it, you can't keep doing that all the time because uh, it won't work too well. I'm going to try something else. Let's see if I just bend it this way. No, nope, it didn't work. What if I bend it sideways? No, nope. it only works if I bend the side up. Okay, then it stops and goes. So I wonder where it stops. I'm going to try this again. And I'm going to go until it stops. I'm going to stop the side and mark where it is. The dent is halfway through the stocking when it gets stuck. So what does that tell me? Hmm. I'm not sure what it tells me. I'm going to have to think about that. What it does tell me is there's still something bent. And the reason that it sticks right at the end right here would be because of the dent. So I guess there's still a dent and a bend on this. So I think I'm going to first go after the dent. And then when, after the dent is out, I'm going to go after the bend. You may remember from some of my previous videos that I used the number 12 slide mandrel to work on the outer side. I'm going to put the mandrel back in the vise and work on these dents. And I'm going to work on them the same way that I worked on the dents originally. I have the trombone slide on the mandrel and I'm going to tap on the dent. The dent is right there. And if I turn this around, you can see the ripples. Uh, there are a few ripples here on the other side, and that's from where the metal is stretched out. When the metal gets stretched out and then bent back, it can create some ripples on the other side. So I'm going to tap on that with the small dent hammer. You may think that tapping makes the dent go in, and usually it does. When you have the brass in between the mandrel and the dent hammer, that is two pieces of steel with a thin layer of brass in between. So it can tend to stretch out the metal too, and stretching it out may make it a little bit. When I tap on this with a dent hammer, it will make the high spots go down, but it will also make the low spots come up. Of course there are high spots where the dent was, but also on the sides of the dent there are high spots where the metal got pushed out when it got bent, and then there are high spots on the back from when I got the dents out. 
I'm going to tap on these dents for a little while. It's not going to be like the time when I tapped on it probably 10,000 times in one video. Well, you didn't have to watch me tap on it that much, but it's probably about how many times I tapped on it. Someone asked why I did not just run the proper size dent ball right through the slide. The reason for that is inside it's pretty cylindrical already and running a dent ball through probably would not help and it might make things worse because it might scrape up the inside. And also dent balls are made to go around bends and the big problem was the bend and not the dents. So that's why I did not run a dent ball through it. That was good thinking though, and I'm finding this trombone repair very interesting because it's getting you guys to think, and it also has made me think a lot about how to do different types of repairs. And a lot of times that's how you do these difficult jobs. You come up with a new way of doing things that maybe no one else has ever come up with before, or maybe just a way that I have never thought of before. But when you start thinking about it, then you think of new ways to do things. And some of the ways work, some don't. And if you try it and it does not work, as long as it has not done any damage, well, it really does not hurt anything. Then you just say, oh, that way didn't work, and then you try something else. The slide seems to be working pretty well. If I let go of it, you can see that it it falls without too much effort, but there still is a little bit of drag on it. Again, I think it might be more bent than dented. I'm going to bend the slide with my thumbs and then go back and forth as I do that. If I bend it like this and pull back and forth, it's not moving at all. So I'll try it this way, it moves a little bit. Okay, they're not sliding easily. It's sliding fairly easily without doing anything, but it still does stick a little bit. So I'm going to try that. See, now it's sliding easily. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on. If I put too much pressure on, it slides hard. But if I put just the right amount of pressure, which is not very much, it slides easily. So I know that the slide needs to be bent a little more in this direction. I'm going to try to find out exactly which direction. Okay, I think like this. I'm going to take the slide and put the dent right at the end of the mandrel and then I'm going to bend it lightly and I, it would be a shame to go too far now so I really am being careful not to do it too far. And again I'm using that flexing motion. Let's see what we have. I'm going to see if I did... okay. Um, yeah, now if I push very lightly it go, it slides easily so it's getting a lot closer. I'm going to do that again, very lightly again. I don't want to go too far at this point. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a lot better than it was. Now I'm going to test the slides and see how they work. I'll put that on there and let it fall out. Okay, it comes up to the dent again like I thought it would. But it's not really that bad. I do not have to push very hard to get it past the dent. Since this slide is off of the other part of the hand slide, I'm just going to have to hold it like this. Okay. That does not really work that well. I'm going to turn the slide a little bit and then try it. You may wonder why turning the slides would work, and I really don't know exactly why. All I know is that it does work sometimes. One time I was working on a trombone slide, and I could not get it figured out. I worked for hours on it. And, okay, that works pretty well, like that, okay. Uh, I could not get the slide figured out. Let me show you just a second. I'll grab this trombone slide. And I could not get it to work for anything. Then, out of desperation, I heated up the slide right here to melt the solder. Then I rotated it halfway around, and I let the solder harden. And then I tried the trombone slide, and it worked perfectly. I cannot exactly explain why that happened, but it did work, so I was happy about that. And I gave the person their trombone slide back, and they were very happy that it worked well. Another time I worked on a trombone slide, and I spent hours on it, and I could not get it to work. So finally, I was so frustrated, I just put it on my bench. I went home for the night, came back the next day. I picked up the slide, and it was perfect. I do not know how that happened, but it worked, and I was happy, and the customer was happy too, so it all worked out. Trombone slides can be very difficult to work on at times. Usually they're not that hard, but sometimes they are very difficult and very frustrating.
All that to say, when I solder this trombone slide on, I'm going to solder it the right direction so that it works. Another thing about testing trombone slides one at a time is when I am holding this, there is a reasonable amount of weight on this slide, and it will bend the slide down a little bit. But when you have two inner slides holding up the trombone slide, it does not bend as much. Sometimes you can have a slide that works well individually. You try the other slide, it works well individually. You put the two together and it does not work as well. It's probably because the inner slide is slightly bent, but then the weight of the trombone slide straightens out the slide. But when you put both of them on there, it doesn't bend as much, and therefore it does not straighten out the slide as much. I think that these slides work well enough now that it's about time to put this trombone slide back together. And that does not mean that I'm all done straightening the slides and getting the dents out of the slides. I will probably need to do more of that after I put it back together. But I need to put this slide back together now so that I can work with it together because that's how the trombone is going to be played. The player will not play the trombone like this with one of the slides missing. So I'm going to put this back together and I need to make sure that the slide works well when it's together. It may possibly work better after I get it together or it may work worse, I am not sure. But that's why I need to get it together so I can see what I am working with. If you remember way back to the first video, I showed you these parts that were broken. And this is the cork barrel, it goes on there. And then this is the receiver, it goes on to the bell section and holds the bell section on. And that goes on here, kind of like that. And then the slide slides inside of here. When I got this trombone, these two pieces were already off and broken. If you look right there, you can see that there's some solder that did not come from the factory that way. So I am assuming that somebody worked on this already and was not able to get it fixed. I'm going to have to clean up all that solder and then I'm going to take these two tubes and I'm going to silver solder it back together. And the silver solder is a very hard solder. It holds up very well and also it can fill in gaps. And there is some metal missing here. There are some gaps. So what I'm going to have to do is figure out how that goes together and then put some silver solder on this. That will hold it together well, but you cannot silver solder around any soft solder. The reason why is soft solder melts at 450 degrees and silver solder melts at around 1200 degrees. And what's going to happen if I do that is it's going to melt this solder and then it will not only melt it but crystallize it. And once the soft solder crystallizes, you cannot solder on it. You have to file it off and it makes a big mess. So what I'm going to do is clean these up very good, get all of the soft solder off so that I can start silver soldering these together. Now I'm going to clean up the solder. I'm going to do that by using the heat and wipe method. You heat up the solder till it melts. And it melts around 450 degrees. And I'm going to... When it melts, I'm going to wipe it off. And you may think that this would hurt your finger, but it does not uh, if you do it quick. I heard of someone before, they did the heat and wipe with their bare hands. They just did it fast enough that they could actually use their bare hands doing it. Uh, I don't think I'd try that, but it does not really hurt. Not that I'm suggesting that you guys do this. If you solder, you need to take all safety precautions because soldering can be dangerous if you do not know what you're doing and if you're not careful. All the solder is cleaned up. Now it does leave a very thin layer of solder, but that will just buff off with the buffing machine. So this one is ready. Now I'm going to clean up the solder on the bell receiver and that's done pretty much the same way. But it's probably going to take a little more heat because it's a little thicker. So you can see when the solder melts because it becomes shiny. I have done several videos on soldering before, so I will leave the link to those videos in the description below. 
I noticed that there is solder that's coming out between these cracks right there where it's broken and it's very important that I get all that solder cleaned up. So what I'm going to have to do is try to pull this apart. There may be another piece in there. If I do not pull it apart, when I silver solder it, it's going to superheat the soft solder and it's going to crystallize it. And again, it's going to make a big mess. So I'm going to have to see if I can get those pieces apart. I'm not sure where they're soldered together. So I'm going to wait for that to cool off and then try to figure it out. The piece is cooled off so I can touch it now. But what I've noticed is right in between, see where the broken part is and this little uh, stepped up portion here, it looks like there is solder coming out there. So I'm thinking that this is actually two pieces. So what I need to do is take these two pieces off. Then I'm going to clean it up so that I do not have the problem with the soft solder. That's a lot of work to do just to solder one thing together, but it needs to be done, so I guess I'm going to do it. I'm going to heat this part up to temperature and try to slide that off, if it will even come off. I'm going to heat this up to temperature, and I know it's hot enough when I start seeing the solder come out. Okay, I'm not sure this is even going to come off because I think it's hot enough to come off, if it was going to come off. And I don't see it moving at all. The tube is just a short one, and I'm going to end up having to take it off a little chunk at a time, I think. Is it coming off now? Uh, there we go. Come on, get out of there. There we go. There, I got the little tube out. I don't know why they had a little tube in there in the first place, but well, there it is. I was hoping to get more work done today, but you never know what's going to happen, especially with trombones. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos, and look in the description below for links to related videos.